Blender 4 is officially out and here are the top 5 features in the new release. Number 5. Base Point and Transform Navigation. These are actually two features but they go hand in hand so I bundled them together. Let's say that you want to extend this wall until it matches the edge of this other wall. Before you would need to turn the snapping on but now we can use Base Point. You select the face that you want to move, I'll constrain to the Y axis and now if you press B and hover on a surface, the cursor will show different shapes. An hourglass for an edge, a triangle for the midpoint of an edge, a square for a vertex and a circle for a face. Left clicking on any of this creates a base point. Then I can snap to another reference point, click on it and if I go to top view you'll see that both edges are perfectly aligned. Now let's say that there's a step on this wall but from my perspective I cannot see it. Now if I begin to transform by grabbing the face, Y to constrain to the axis, if I want to see the wall I can now navigate during the transform by pressing and holding the alt key and now I can navigate while the transform is still active. I can rotate the camera, zoom in and out and move. So now I can just rotate the view and now I can easily see the other side and so if I press B I can select the reference point which in this case is the edge of my wall and now I can click on any of these points. You can even use references that are on another mesh. Let's say I have this furniture and I want to align the edge of the wall to that furniture. Same thing, I select my face, G to grab, Y to constrain to the axis, B to set the base point and then I can set this face as the other reference. And now they're perfectly aligned. One more example since I'm liking this one so much. Let's say you've got a grid and you want to add a new row that has the exact same size as the previous ones. Easy. You select these, extrude, constrain to the axis, then B. We can use any of these vertices as base points. I'll just select this one, then the next one. Done. Now if I turn on the edge length overlay, you can see that they are the exact same size. Number four, ADX view transform. This is now the default view transform replacement filmic, so you don't really have to do anything at all to start using it. AGX is capable of more realistic renders by smoothly attenuating the colors to white when exposed to intense lights. This is easier to understand with this image. In filmic, as hues become brighter, they all eventually reach one of what they're calling the notorious six colors, red, yellow, green, cyan, blue or magenta, before fading to white. You can see here that regardless of what tone of cyan you started with, as it becomes brighter, these last four steps are almost the same. In AGX, each hue follows its own transition to white, which results in a wider and richer range of colors as you start overexposing your scene. Here are some images from the Blender Project's website for you to get a feel of the difference. Images will look closer to what a real-life camera would capture, although some of the colors might look a little bit washed out. In short, AGX forms a 0 to 1 closed domain image from the unbound radiometric like tri data that modern 3D render engines like Cycles and Eevee produce. <laughs> I just wanted to share with you my pain of reading all of this technical stuff. I read all of this so that you don't have to. Number three, light linking. This allows you to easily set which of the lights affect which of the objects. So in this scene, I've got several lights for the bullet bills and I've got one light for the background plane. Currently, every light is affecting every object in the scene. So if I move my background light, you can see that it's having an effect on my characters. In the same way, the background plane is also being affected by some of the lights that are intended to light the characters. If I select one of my lights and then go to Object Properties, Shading, you'll see that we've got two new menus, Light Linking and Shadow Linking. If I expand Light Linking and then click on New, it creates a new collection where I can drag and drop my background objects. And now this light will only affect this object. Now you can see that if I move the light, it's not affecting the characters at all, only the background. The collections that you create here it won't show up in the outliner for some reason but if you click on this button the drop down will show all of the collections that you've created either here or here and so you can choose either way you should note that the light and shadow linking also work on surfaces with emission shaders and not only with lights to fix the background lighting i've got all of my characters in this collection so i can just select each of the lights go to object properties light linking and from the drop down i can select my bullet build collection if i do the same thing with each of the lights, these lights are only affecting the bullets and this light is only affecting the background. Number two, principal BSDF shader. Now we have collapsible menus for easier readability and order. They also revamped the layering system and this is how it looks now. The idea is that all of these metal diffuse subsurface, the specular transmission and emission layers form your base materials and then on top of that you have the code previously called clear code but it now has a tint value so it doesn't have to be a clear code and then on 
on top of that layer we've got the sheen, which now has a roughness value and we can use it to simulate a layer of dust. An example that they mention in the documentation is having a phone screen with an emission layer, then the glass and then a layer of dust on top of it, which can be achieved with only one principled BSDF shader. And the number one feature in 4.0 is the node based tools. If you're doing the same thing over and over in your project, you can now create a tool in geometry nodes and use it whatever you want. Imagine that you want to make a shape like this. So we are selecting the faces, extruding them, and then merging that top face to create this pyramid like shapes. Now we can of course do that with each individual face, but now we can also go to the geometry node, select tool from this drop down menu and create that process with nodes. We've got this new selection node which contains whatever you have selected, in this case in edit mode. So we can apply our tool to a specific face that we select. Now if I select a face, I can access my tool in this new menu of unassigned tools. So if I click on it, it works on my selection. Like any other tool, you can right click on it and add to quick favorites. So now when I press Q, it's on my quick menu. So I can just easily select the face, press Q, click on the tool, and then I can very quickly do this with any of the faces that I choose. You should note that this is a destructive workflow, so I immediately have access to the newly created geometry and unless I control Z all of this, I cannot go back. One more thing about this is that whenever you create a tool, you can right click on it and mark it as an asset, just like any other asset. This makes it easy to have all of your tools available in all of your files, or you can share them with your team, or if you're a creator and have an audience, you can share your tools with the audience. But what do you think are the best features in 4.0? Sound off in the comments and don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed the content. I'm Dude Blender. Happy blending.